Hey guys, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. Wow, rest day at the Giro d'Italia. What a day that was yesterday, stage nine. Roglic was the winner in the time trial. Obviously, he was the pre-race favorite, but how close was that with Victor Campenarts? My heart goes out to Victor. He did what seemed to be an amazing ride and what, one to two kilometers from the finish. Suffered a mechanical, apparently his chain dropped. We all saw it mechanic drop jumped out of the car tried to help him it was somewhat botched he seemed to be in the wrong gear Wiggins said he was in 5311 actually if you look really closely it seems to be around 5314 still impossible to put that torque down going uphill around plus three percent at that point and the result was yeah he lost the stage by 11 11 seconds now, I've had a few queries from people who said who did the best effort and would he have won? Would he have won, guys, if he hadn't have dropped the chain? Well, it's obvious if you just count on this video, count the delay. Now, by the way, there's about a 10 to 15 second delay before this video comes in where he hops off the bike because the camera wasn't following him at that moment. Then he has the mechanical, which lasts about 25 seconds. But don't forget... It takes another 10 to 15 seconds to get up to racing speed, which at that point is about 25 to 30 kph. So all told, he lost, you know, around about 50 seconds. So there's no doubt that the gap at the end was 11 seconds, but he lost 50 seconds. So he would have won that stage, no doubt. But here's something interesting. Who do you think did the best effort on the day? And if we correct for that, 50 second loss you know in terms of power who do you think put out the best power on the day can we work that out from first principles well actually there are some really amazing tools out there these days not only can you look at the course of course you could always do that and look at the grade so for example on this course which is 34.8 kilometers you know if you averaged it out it's around a two percent grade over the whole time That's a little bit misleading because obviously the course over this length goes, you know, up and down. In fact, we know the climb is around um, the climbing time, sorry, during this 34.8 kilometers, around eight kilometers, 31 percent climbing. Uh, We also know the flat is around 64 percent or 24 K. And there's also some subtle downhills of about one K. And altogether, it means out of your racing time, you're doing about 35 minutes on the flat, 16 minutes going uphill and three minutes downhill. And Roglic, by the way, said he took it easy in the first half. I'm not sure I believe that, but definitely his stats show at the intermediate checks. He was around, what was it, 30 seconds down? So he made that all up and, and more in the climb, which is pretty amazing. Now we can actually go further than just see it on the classic website profile because these days a lot of riders are uploading their actual ride to Strava. Now this may seem pretty surprising but yeah some of them usually not in the top five but you know some in the top 20 look here they are uploading their actual ride from this course to Strava and many of them put their power data in there as well. So you can follow their ride And you can even do compare, you know, you can say, let's look at the leaderboard. So we've got here Catania versus Richard Carapaz. And you can see here that if you even out, you equalize Catania's time, then Carapaz is actually up in the beginning of the time trial by about six seconds. Just as the course starts to ramp up, they're even. And then Carapaz... Uh, falls behind around 20 and he pulls it back right at the end and nearly finishes equal he's actually around seven seconds down you can see that and you can add in all other riders Ben O'Connor Thomas de Ghent you know add in all these riders and then we can see look (laughs) wow look at that so who was the best on the flat well it looks like it's Caruso uh, closely followed by Thomas de Ghent when he starts to pitch up you see they nearly all equalize and that's very interesting at the beginning of the climb but it's Mattia and Richard that pull away you know up that climb 
Okay, back to Victor and Roglic, back to the fight between Victor and Roglic. And by the way, a little bit of Google Maps enables us to say exactly where Victor lost the, lost the chain. It was on this road here, which is called um, Via Montalabo. So you can actually follow it on the map. And if I show you the mini map here, you can see how close it was to the actual end. The end of the race is here in the uh, mini state of San Marino. Okay, now this is really interesting, guys. What we can do then is plug in the stats of both riders into our calculator. And we've done this loads of times at Fast Fitness Tips. Okay, so here we go. Keep up with me now. The racing distance was 34.8 kilometers, yeah? Victor's time was 52 minutes, almost exactly 52.05 in metric. So that would give his speed at 40.11 kph. Now from pro cycling stats, I can get his weight and it's said to be 72.5. Okay, he may have lost a bit during the Euro. Uh, he's racing in the full TT equipment including disc wheel, that puts his CDA around about 0.21 or so. His rolling resistance about 0.004, i.e. very good. He was going up, but let's just call it 2% over 34.8K. Now we've had a bike change. We've had a bike change for Victor Kapanats. We didn't see this happen, but he's coming up to the finish line. Now, was this planned? Surely imagine so, because they would have had a spare time trial bike if there had to be a mechanical change, surely. Remember we heard from Nibali's coach saying 51 and a half, 52 minutes. Kabanats, the European champion, has given absolutely everything here. He's emptied the tank towards the line, but what is the best time that Kabanats can set? Final few meters of sprint over. Here comes the Belgian. It is a 52-03, 40.1 kilometers per hour, and he beats the best time by two minutes, 26 seconds. That makes seconds. his watts to achieve 40.11 around about 411 watts and the watts per kilo would be what 5.67 approximately so that's what we get as an initial headline 5.67 watts per kilo for victor great effort no doubt hang on a second but he lost 50 seconds yeah roughly we said 50 seconds 15 before the video 25 during and 10 to catch up to racing speed so that's around 50 seconds now, if you assume then that he would have finished 50 seconds faster, that makes his racing speed, if you work it out, 40.8 kph. 40.8 kph would have required not 411 watts, but 425 watts, and that would have made his watts per kilo about 5.86 to achieve that time on that course. Okay, that's Victor. Let's do Roglic now. Well, Roglic obviously is same course, 34.4 kilometers. His time was 51.52 in metric, which is a speed of 40.52 kph. Now, I've got his weight at 65 kilos from pro cycling stats. Let's give him the same CDA. Now, there was a difference here. I don't know if you noticed. I'm sure you did. The conditions had changed by the time Roglic raced quite significantly. In fact, Victor raced in 17 degrees, according to Strava, but by the time Roglic raced, it had fallen to 12 degrees. So that causes a slight difference, which we'll put into the calculator. Primoz Roglic has measured this effort to perfection. He had the Maglia Rosa for five days. He lost Lawrence de Plus. Oh, and that's a disappointed look on the left. Victor Kapanac will be left wondering, what if? The mechanical that cost him 20 to 30 seconds and it's going to be a tight margin i think of victory for primoz roglic but it looks like being victory nonetheless if you take his like similar conditions but difference in temperature then roglic to get 40.5 at his weight would have required 6.2 watts per kilo or 402 watts and if you want to know how that broke down it would be gravity 137 Rolling resistance, 196. Drivetrain losses, 34. However, we've forgotten to take one big factor into account, haven't we? And that's the effect of rain. Now, rain is actually quite interesting. Yeah, at a very simple level, it slows you down in the descents. You're going to go cautious in the corners. So he's going to lose a little bit more time in the flat. Well, he did, actually, as we said. 
he was at least 30 seconds down on the first and second intermediates. So that's not surprising. But what about the effect on the aerodynamics and rolling resistance? Well, actually, if it's not frank rain, but high humidity and let's say low pressure because of storm conditions, actually aero drag is lower in those situations. But if there's frankly rain in the air and it's dripping all over you, obviously your aero drag is going to go up. It's hard to calculate that because hardly anyone simulates wet conditions in the wind tunnel. But there's also an effect on rolling resistance. If it's just a tiny bit of damp on the road, believe it or not, your rolling resistance actually sometimes goes down because like at the molecular level, the adhesion between the tire and the road is broken somewhat. But if there's actually a film that you're having to push out of the way, and I say that was the conditions on stage nine, you know, there was actually standing water, then of course rolling resistance goes up and it can go up up to twice as much. The speed would be reduced to 39.6 from 40.5, so quite a big reduction. So in other words, he actually needed to increase his power, obviously, to go in those conditions. And I estimate the increase in power was up to 418 watts, or 6.4, amazing, 6.4 watts per kilo for that uh, 51, 52 minute ride. So there you have it, boom guys, 418 watts for Roglic. If you want to know how that breaks down, that would be 137 in gravity losses, 195 in aero losses, 51 in rolling resistance. That's up, by the way, from 34 without the rain. And 11 in drivetrain losses and 12 in rotational drag. So that's how his losses, that's how the race was won and lost scientifically. Yes, Victor actually probably put out more watts, but Roglic's watts per kilogram were actually higher. But wow, that was an amazingly exciting race, guys. Okay, guys, this was Coach Alex from Fast Fitness Tips signing off. That was just a little bit of fun looking at stage nine of the Giro. Let's see how it plays out in the next week or two. It's been an exciting race so far. Be sure to check out our Strava Club or check us out on Patreon or just give us a like or share this video. Definitely it's appreciated. See you in the next video, guys. Take care. Have a great ride. Rimush, what an astonishing performance today. You didn't manage to take back one minute on the last climb on Campanets. Mm, yeah, it was, uh, was again a nice time trial for me. Uh, I did my best, so I'm uh, happy with it. Uh, yeah, it was uh, just a difference. I think uh, he had a really dry conditions from the beginning. I had uh, yeah, the rain, so uh, I really couldn't take any risk uh, in the corners. And uh, yeah, I just uh, then went uh, really all out at the end. Did the rain change something in your strategy today? Uh, let's say just for sure uh, changed. Uh, I went really slow uh, in the corners and from the beginning, uh, and uh, uh, I was just that thing. Uh, otherwise, there on the flat and on the climb, uh, I think uh, that it doesn't really matter uh, so much.